we back with it again. But this time we got a special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Hi, everybody. Vontae Devin here with the. You already knew who that was, though. Uh, we finna get right back to it, though. That was it. We had an episode. We good? Well, in the office with Berkey, first thing he says is, we're not expecting nothing of you. I'm like, man, I'm just going to be me. That's all I've ever done is just be me. Um, just enjoy myself, enjoy the game. I'm back with my family. In Edmonton for today's game between the Ottawa Red Blacks, 1-8 on the season, and the Edmonton Elks, 3-7 and seven on the season. Could have three teams on eight losses tonight if Ottawa wins which would put uh, teams like Montreal and Toronto in the crosshairs. It was funny because going into the, the game and, and pre-game, warm-ups and everything, they had like a, um, a little clip on their big like scoreboard um, that was showing um, like a highlight of their team and then a low light of our team. And the low light of our team was uh, when I came in for Cal against Calgary. It was like one of the last plays of the game and I went to show the football and the ball slipped out of my hand and I fumbled and we recovered. And so they replayed that like every 30 seconds for all of pregame warmups and all of like before the warmups, they just were showing that on the scoreboard like on loop of the ball slipping on my hands when I was getting sacked. Taco Bell, 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 Go, Sahad! And there it is for Nick Arbuckle. Let's go! Let's go, baby! Let's go! 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 Let's
So after he got off the field, they didn't know I was down. So they ran up to me, hey, you good, man, you good? I said, nah, I'm not good. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lay here for a second. <laughs> but that was one of the most exciting plays that ever happened to me in my life. It was pretty fun. Hey, we playing football today. We've said it once before this season, and we can say it again. The Ottawa Red Blacks win just their second victory of 2022. I think Nick Arbuckle had an amazing game. Our offense had a great game. Our defense was solid as usual. And it's just that confidence that you have in your guys, it just takes it to another level. Think about it, the previous week, we lost to a team that we knew we could beat, and then we went into their house and we beat them. You know, it, it was probably, it was probably one of the better feeling wins of my career in terms of, you know, being able to go to a place that traded you away and, um, you know, benched you or whatever just a month prior and now you're, you know, there beating them again at home. It honestly started to feel real. Like it was like there's something building here, you know, the, we had a decent game, you know, there's, there's some things starting to happen, like this could maybe be it. You know, it's probably something I've, I learned before I was a parent, learned from being a, a kid, um, and just took into being a parent now, and, and, and I've kind of tr tried my best to approach that way, uh, approach it that way, you know, the past two years that I've been playing football with, with having my daughter and everything. I love you, Beanie. I love you. I love you, Beanie. I'll tell you what, you know, over the past few years, it's been very challenging because um, there's been a lot of ups and downs and being traded, I think, like two or three times in the past two years and, um, you know, starting and then being, you know, not starting and starting and not starting and kind of going through the very emotional roller coaster that, you know, undoubtedly affects you when you leave the, the stadium and you go back home. Um, but I think just over time and, you know, probably this season better than any, um, and, and recently I've, you know, been able to more so just really leave everything here, you know, good or bad. Um, you know, my life with, you know, with my wife and daughter is, uh, you know, is different and it's separated and I'm a different person. You know, I'm the guy that does tea parties and wear, wears bows because my daughter wears a bow and she wants to match with me and, um, you know, anything in the world to, you know, to make her and my wife happy. You know, it's, that's my life. Tonight, the Ottawa Red Blacks, two and eight, take on the Montreal Alouettes, four and six. Hey, hey, one play at a time. He's fucking dumb. Give these bitches a headache. Let's go, baby. Hold me, hold me, hold me. That game was fun. That game was real fun. Performance here tonight. Two straight games from Ayala with a catch of 30 yards or more in the air. They go four receivers to the left of Terrence. That's where he looks again at the dancer. Oh! The front four of the Ottawa Red Blacks on back-to-back -back plays influencing. And I give credit to the front four, but it, it might just be Lorenzo Walden getting the back heel on back-to-back play. <laughs> Nick Arbuckle goes to work looking to throw on first down. Pitts, takes a shot over the top and he's double-moving. But makes the grab of the 42. And he's 
Hey, get the fuck on my dog. Down by Durden on the boundary corner, but a big shot play over the top of the rear. That's just a complete football game. People doing their jobs. You know, there, there's always in football games, there's going to be like three or four plays, and you don't know whenever they're going to happen that are going to kind of change the out course of the game. Uh, I thought Coleman's touchdown was one of them. For Harris standing in the gun. Ready to roll for the Alouettes, and the football is out, it's loose. Devon Coleman picks it up, it's a gift, and the Red Blacks are in the end zone. Uh, we saw Trevor Harris turn on the Jets earlier in this ball game to escape the Ottawa rush, but this time, not able to accelerate away from that backside pursuit. Just seeing, just seeing Devon uh, pick the ball up, <laughs> I thought he wasn't going to pick it up. I thought he was going to hit it out of bounds. I was like, no, don't hit it out of bounds, just go. He picked it up and he dove. <laughs> he said he dove from uh, five yards, but it was three. <laughs> Quarterback, and he even going back to his go, five and Arbuckle looks to the right, rolls away from the pressure of Beverick, pulls it back, shoulder, into the end zone, the first touchdown pass of Nick Arbuckle. As the Ottawa Red Blacks go to 967 days after originally got treated to Ottawa, he got a chance to start. A week later, he gets into the end zone with his first touchdown pass, which Paul Apelis wanted so badly for him last week and just couldn't get it. As Nick Arbuckle watches from the sideline as number five, who was the starter for Ottawa, goes to that wedge, drives the legs, leans forward. Let's go! Touchdown, Red Blacks. Let's go, baby! Hey, that's how we win a fucking football game, baby. That's how we win a football game. Hey, good job, Goose. Good job, RD. Hey, that's how we win a football game, baby. I love you, bro. Way to fucking fight. Let's go, good job, D-Will. That's how we win a football game, baby. Let's go, Toronto. That's how we win, baby. Let's go. Good job, baby. Way to fucking finish. Way to finish. 24, the Red Blacks get their second consecutive victory. And third on the year, Duke, all on the road. They do it in pretty convincing fashion in Montreal against the Alouettes. I apologize, Damon. Nobody seems to want to kick to you. Good Lord. We ran the ball when we needed to, Dad. Put it down their throat to get a touchdown. We took it all away. Right? Outstanding job. And you played smart football. Right? Now, right? Understand, right? This feeling's great. Have the time. Celebrate. Celebrate the next couple days. We play Toronto, then we have a bye. Yes, Let's go to work, get our two yes, points, sir. and put ourselves where we want to go. Yes, sir. Right? right? You, you control what you need to do. I'm proud of you guys. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Good yes, job. Red lights on three. One, two, three. Red this was a game for the first time. It looked like a Paul Apolis offense, keeping the defense off balance, runs, passes. We, we didn't know what was coming in the broadcast booth. Um, oh, now Caleb Evans is coming into the game and, and they're using him with his legs. It, it felt like a Paul Apolis offense for the first time in Ottawa and it was, it was great to see it executed in the manner that, that the Red Blacks did offensively. As the Ottawa Red Blacks, three and eight, take on the six and five Toronto Argonauts and at one and eight, you just wanted to see them win a game, Jeff, at 3-8. and eight, You just want to see them win a home game. But the wild thing is, if they win a home game, playoffs are in play, first place is in play. That's how wild the East is, if they can grab a win here today against the Argo. It was, it was terrible. That, that game was so... Th those two games were unacceptable for me personally and for us to play like that in front of our, the city of Ottawa and our fans. We got Xerox left. 50 Fido, tail back shoot on one. Ready, spear, spear, spear. Hey, get under, DA. Get under him, get under him. Go! 
Starts in positive territory here for the Red Blacks. Trying to throw a seam over the middle, intercepted. He's picked off for the first time since August 5th. As it's Maurice Carnell, the fourth, on the receiving end the fuck of the new buckle pass attempt. Tight spiral from Arbuckle, but it lands in the hands of an all-white uniform. What just happened? Oh, fuck, boys. You know, I saw a look pre-snap where um, I felt like Ackland could have bent it, you know, like a post, and I was going to throw it right inside the wheel linebacker in front of the boundary half and, and hit Ackland on the post. Um, and then, you know, ball snap, boom, I see the wheel, like, shoot out, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to throw this. And I didn't see the safety, you know, come down to Ackland, forcing Ackland to turn his post more into a dig. But I threw him a post, so the ball went over Ackland and to the boundary half, and I threw a pick. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, that happened because I, like, predetermined, like, oh, this is Ackland, this lot run this route, he's our best receiver. I'm going to throw this basically no matter what. And, and not seeing the things that could have affected the throw and made me come off of it. And so basically just getting locked into something like my pre-snap read. Um, so like those instances of like making a mistake and then just trying to learn from it, and not beating yourself up over it to where it's gonna lead to new mistakes. I see why you took a flat angle. I didn't see the post player. I thought you were gonna post angle, which is why it went so high on you. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't wanna run into block your Yeah, you're right, I. I thought you were going to take this angle after I threw you because I didn't see that guy. But I see why you flattened it. Hey, it's my bad. We'll get this. Hey, we got this, DA. 13-6 Argos over the Red Blacks in a first half dominated by Toronto. Hey, we got yard, yard right, 775. Then the next day, don't want. Ready? Yard right, 775. Go! Argonauts improved to seven and five on the season. They defeat the Ottawa Red Blacks by a score of 24 to 19. Three and nine in 2022, but all three of those wins coming away from home as we hear from the man who reached a thousand yards receiving on the season, Jalen Acklin in conversation with our Steve Bunda. Jalen, another close loss. How does this feel? Feels terrible. I mean, I just feel like we we should win those like that. I, I, I'm honestly embarrassed because I don't want to lose in front of my, our fans like that. And I feel like we're just not, not playing good at home. So it's, it's really frustrating. You play these guys one more time in a week, okay? We play them only three times, okay? You win next week at home, you win the season series, right? That's the goal, right? You finish with a tie, you finish with more points than them, right? I didn't want to talk about that all week, right? Because it didn't really matter, right? This week, you get an opportunity to play the same freaking team. You correct any mistakes you can. You win the season series, and then you finish higher. You're tied with them, you get ahead of them. That's the understanding. So I know we're disappointed, right? Just keep playing football. You're sitting there, and then you got your coach telling you, we're OK, we can still make the playoffs. And it's like, dude, this, that was embarrassing. It's like, it's more than just losing a football game. You're like losing hope, and you're losing faith and I think whenever you lose faith in something that's whenever even in your life like if you don't have faith in something then what like you're just going to go into this like depression I fucking hate Toronto give me 60 plays of all you got 60 plays of all you got let's go fuck Toronto I'm on three fuck <laughs> three fuck Toronto <laughs> Down, but it's through the air. 
I mean, this looks like a push off for you, Pat. They're going for two. They're going for two. I don't know what they're going to do here. Hey, Pat. Push push off. Off. What is this? He pushed them off. He held them off with his arm. He pushed them a little bit. I wonder why. I mean, subtle. Nah. Go, Sahar! The two, the two interceptions really deflated off. That's it. And taking a knee near the top. No, go. I'm going to huddle. I'm going to huddle. There's, there's zero. Why don't I need I know, but there was zero. Did you get in the huddle? Yeah, take a knee on one. Take a knee on one. Take a knee? Yes. Frustrating Go. season. Go on, Eddie. Go on, Eddie. Go on. For Ottawa as they just take a knee and the boost start up again. After the timeout, they just end the first half that way. I mean, like, everything's on. It's just whenever I run, like I ran four bells and then you know yeah. two torches. Yeah. So it's just like he's kind of knowing what I'm doing. I got you. So, yeah. It's okay. all good. Hey, keep doing you. You're doing a good job getting open. I'll get you the ball. and everybody on the offensive side of the ball looking like a running back that won't be denied. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, it's not Spear. I got the out. Take that bit. Go, go, go. down the He had won against Ottawa last year. Chris Edwards has the second pick six of the night. And that is 41 points off turnovers. I don't know if I've ever seen a game where so many points have been scored. I don't think I've ever heard that before. 41 points. What is that play? What is that place to be? It came in and fucking poked here. What do you mean? What? I'm in Haas. How can we have three man cross at Spear? I'm the Haas guy. Eighth left, both Spear. 50. 50 Haas. It says, it says Haas on our call sheet. Boom, my fucking god! Is, is Mark okay if, if I did go in and I felt we had to do it? So you cannot be in error. You make the call? Yeah. Part of my management discussions with upper management, uh, you know, we started talking about it probably in the August months um, of pros and cons of considering it and what it would mean to the organization. And I was steadfast that I thought Paul gave us the best chance to win football games. I also knew at the same time that, you know, we had Bob Dice on staff that that had been an interim head coach before and had a ton of qualities to be a head coach and we had Mike Benavides on staff who had been in head coach. So my dilemma was not the complexity of replacing the head coach. It was the complexity of the head coach slash offensive coordinator. When you make a change like this, this is football. It's, uh, you know, systems and so many players in play, um, you know, making a change at the coaching level uh, doesn't always mean immediate impact on the field. and. It also uh, comes with lots of challenges in terms of transition. Other coaching positions needed to be filled. Um, you know, you're, you're moving people around, so you're backfilling other positions. 
Um, and you know, we still wanted to win the next game. So what gave us the best chance to win the next game? Um, so those were, you know, just some of many, many factors that, that went into it. That BC trip just fucking sucked, dude. I, that was probably the worst trip I've ever had in the CFL. What are you talking about? It's like we took a drug. We went on a high for like a couple weeks. And then once we came down and realized that that was not who we were. And now we back to regular life and we feeling real bummy. And it's like, we bums. Like, you're sitting there looking in the mirror like, you know what? I'm tired of lying to myself saying next week's gonna be better when it, it's truly not. Can this team make this work and, and can it can they make it consistently work? And it wasn't consistently working and we just kept going in with the same different same stuff here and there and it just wasn't clicking. I always think that we as a team could dig our way out of whatever we were in. We just had to find some answers. And at that point, I was just like, what the fuck are we doing? It's the Ottawa Red Blacks. It's another loss. Hey, they won three in a row on the road, but that streak is over. 3-11 and 11 on the season in Montreal next Monday, trying to keep their very faint playoff hopes mathematically intact. First and foremost, obviously Saturday wasn't an easy day. Um, but I felt it was needed what we needed to do to move forward as an organization uh, to coach La police Can't say enough about him uh, from the second I took on this job. It was a true partnership Which is all you can ask out of a GM head coach relationship outstanding person good football coach uh, And we're, we are just privileged to work with him and uh, he handled uh, the news with the class of dignity that you would expect I know everyone saw the statement that's not a lip service, that's what me and him were. Nothing, I don't want anything to ever change involving someone else's life. Like I want everyone to be able to do what they want to do. And I want to be the guy to, that a coach can look at and be like, oh yeah, if I use him, I can keep my job because he's so good, you know? Whenever they did like make that decision to change, I kind of felt like I failed them. But at the same time, something did need to change. And if I wasn't making plays, or if I was doing something to hurt the team, It'd be the same thing. They'd have to cut or release me. So that's just the nature of the business. I like Lap a lot, um, so it was tough. And he was a guy that was really big on uh, a part of bringing me here. Um, so that was tough, and you you kind of feel like you you've let let someone down in a way that um, that that cost them their job. So um, it was that was tough. I think Sean is somebody who just breathes leadership and understanding. It's a tough call to make. It's a tough call because of the human element and the professional aspect. What I'll say about Coach La Police, professional man. He, he, I went to his house and uh, his first reply to me after informing him of the news was making sure he got the spreadsheet with all your guys' numbers so he could connect with you guys and thank you guys. Um, deep amount of care about this league, uh, great person to work with, uh, no issues with the relationship, working with them. So I would say if he reaches out to you, be there for him. It's tough. Everyone will put on a great face. You guys will all be putting on brave faces week after week. We're all people first. You know, 
we're in the business of winning games. Uh, so ultimately that is, uh, is what motivates the decision-making process. Um, but let's not forget, these are people, right? Um, Paul and I had a, have a great relationship. He's a great guy. Um, you, you can't just completely separate the fact that decisions like this have impacts on people, people's families, um, and their future. Um, so, so, you know, again, uh, for Sean, um, you know, he needs to make the decisions that are best for the football team that put us in the best position to win football games. What is your approach to these next four games and, and how challenging is it going to be? Well, uh, three and 11, um, but, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, you know, this is a challenging business all the time. Coach Dice is a guy that you want to play for so bad. And when you went, he was named the head coach, it was just, it, w it made sense for all of us. There's no better decision. No better decision. Like I said, like I have a great father at home, but like when I'm up here, that's really who I count on. You know what I mean? Like my dad, I call him on the phone, but Dice is here. So he's kind of like a father to me. Bob, you have a game in a week, and I, I hate to harp on this, but what's your timeline in terms of the offensive coordinator or finding a play caller? Well, uh, my timeline is this. We're going to do it as fast as possible. <laughs>